when a patient comes to your clinic with pain in his tooth what is your immediate thought a root canal treatment or do you think for a second that it might be dentine hypersensitivity non odontogenic pain reversible pulpitis in which your patient does not require a root canal treatment most dental students come to me and complain that diagnosing tooth pain for them is very challenging and you very well know that inappropriate diagnosis instigates inappropriate treatment i myself have seen dentists performing root canals where it is not needed to simplify things for you i will be starting with a very basic topic with you all pulpitis so what do you think is pulpitis so let's go by the name pulpitis itis means inflammation so pulpitis means inflammation of the dental pulp accompanied by sudden onset of pain now pulpitis can be either reversible or it can be irreversible again going by the name reversible pulpitis means that the pulp has the capacity to return back to its normal or healthy form after the stimulus is removed and in this case your patient does not require a root canal treatment and in irreversible pulpitis the pulp does not have the capacity to return back to its normal or healthy form without getting a root canal treatment done about irreversible pulpitis i will be talking in my next video for this video next 3 minutes i'm just going to talk about reversible pulpitis quick question before we move forward have you ever wondered that why is it sometimes pulp has the capacity to move back to its normal healthy state and sometimes it does not that's because in reversible pulpitis the inflammation is a mild inflammation limited to the areas of the dentinal tubules that's what the histology shows edema of the tissue white cell infiltration reparative dentine formation which is why if proper treatment is provided to the pulp during this time it has the capacity to return back to its normal or healthy state okay let me ask you this have you been asked by your professors frequently that what is the gold standard for diagnosing pulp and periapical diseases well the answer is histology but can we dentist perform histology in our clinics mhm mm that is why to identify and do correct diagnosis we usually depend upon the symptoms and clinical tests so when a patient comes to your clinic with tooth pain follow these five points point number 1 listen to the patient and take history The chief complaint of the patient will help you to differentiate reversible pulpitis from irreversible pulpitis. If it's reversible, the patient will complain of sharp shooting, sudden pain after having anything cold or sweet. Like after having cold water, ice cream, chilled beer or anything sweet. And then they would tell you that usually the pain goes away after 30 seconds of removal of the stimuli. so you can identify that pulp is in the state of reversible pulpitis number 2 visual examination look for caries old or any new restoration trauma trauma from occlusion or any undetected fracture point number 3 dentist's favorite percussion test tap on the tooth and see if patient complains of any pain before we move forward i want to ask you all do you know what percussion test indicate it indicates the spread of the infection or the inflammation into the periapical tissues as we all know that in reversible pulpitis the inflammation is mild and it does not reach up to the periapical tissues that is why in reversible pulpitis the percussion test would be negative of course patients do feel slight discomfort while we tap on the tooth but don't get confused with severe pain number 4 vitality test 
always start vitality test with the cold test perform the cold test on the patient and the patient will tell you that as soon as you remove the cold stimulus the pain goes away within 30 seconds this way you can confirm that the pulp is in its reversible state point number 5 and the most important take a radiograph and what will you see in the radiograph normal periodontal ligament and normal lamina dura remember in reversible pulpitis the infection or the inflammation is mild and it does not reach up to the periapical tissues so here is the case of tooth number 29 according to universal numbering system that's what we use here in america or you can say tooth number 45 according to fdi numbering system so this patient had composite restoration he complains of pain while drinking cold water which goes away within few seconds no lingering pain percussion and palpation test negative vitality test that is cold test was positive which goes away within a few seconds and finally the radiographic examination can you see in the radiograph that there is normal periodontal ligament and normal lamina dura so these five points of diagnosis confirmed that it was reversible pulpitis the slide for these five points i have attached at the end of the lecture you can go and check that out before i finish off with this lecture just a last question for all of you what do you think causes pulpitis you can pause the video and think for a second well it's caries fracture deep restoration like in this case a composite restoration that tooth preparation that you do in which there is extra cutting involved polishing of the restoration all of these causes inflammation of the pulp i hope you like this video i'll see you next time in another lecture with irreversible pulpitis